how will the McCarthy regime work? Well, Skip, he's going to have to work like how the other regimes work, under Jerry rules. I mean, that make it seem like Mike McCarthy is going to come in there, Skip, is going to go wipe all the walls down, and it's going to be, it's going, he's going to be the only voice. He's not going to be the only voice. There have been only one time, one instance, mm -hmm. maybe two slightly. And at the end, Parcells, he, Parcells even wasn't the only voice. But it was mainly Jimmy. That was his skip. I mean, they make it seem like Mike McCarthy. Mm. Oh, oh, Mike's going to clean this up. No, he's not. Yep. Jared's made it abundantly clear. This is my team. I pay the bills. Mm. I'm going to have a say. I'm going to yep. speak. I'm going to talk. I'm going to do what I want to do. So I don't mm -hmm. know where they, where they get this notion from all of a sudden Jerry's going to change yep. because he's hired a different coach. Yep. Skip, look, I do believe this is a, a good hiring. I'm not saying great. It's a solid. It's not splash. Uh, he's old, but like I, uh, uh, he's not old in the sense of no. years, but I'm saying he's, he's uh, people know Mike McCarthy. He was the head coach of the uh, Packers for 13 years. Sure. Yep. He has a nice resume. He's won a Super Bowl. He's gone to playoffs. He has multiple uh, uh, double-digit win seasons, Skip. He's won rounds into, in the playoffs. So that's, that's instant credibility right there. No matter who you, no matter if you're a coach or a player, mm -hmm. Skip, if you have that Super Bowl ring, you yep. come with instant credibility. Mm -hmm. He brings that into the locker room. Okay. So he's a, 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 a different voice, and maybe that's what they need, Skip. Maybe mm. they need, maybe after what, nine years or 10 years of Jason Garrett, it had grown stagnant. I know it grown stagnant with you, it grown stagnant with you after like two or three years. You'll hate yourself. Yeah. But anyway. My objective. <laughs> the, the biggest task that I believe Mike McCarthy has in, before him, Skip, is he's got to convince the Cowboys that your reputation, doesn't win you ball games. Mm. When Mike Mike Shanahan, when he first came, he won. He was the offensive coordinator for 49ers, skip in 94. They won the Super Bowl. He came to us and we got 95. Mm -hmm. And he said the thing that the very first meeting, guys, I expect mm -hmm. us to win games. Yeah. Not because of who we are, but because of how we prepare. Yeah. Because of how we do things. And from that point on, Skip, it wasn't like, well, you know, if the defense can hold them to 17 and we get a break here, we get a break there, we can win the ball game. We took the field every single week. We didn't win every week, mm. but we expected to win. Mm. The Cowboys need to have that level. Of, Skip, you can't, we're the Cowboys. No, 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 that's not good enough. You don't get to roll the ball out there and say, we're the Cowboys, we're going to win. But he has to change the mentality. Even Jerry. Mm. Jerry thinks, Skip, well, we, you know, we got a lot of talent. Talent, everybody's talented. Do you realize everybody in this league is talented? Now, some teams have a little more than others, mm -hmm. but every team is talented. But you don't play your best football, Jerry. Mm -hmm. You found that out this year. You go eight and eight. Mm -hmm. So Mike McCarthy has his hands full, Skip. First of all, changing the mentality in that locker room and then dealing with Jerry. How does he deal with Jerry? Because he, it's easy to say, Skip, oh, I'm going to just tune him out. But how do you tune him out, Skip, when you're talking to the team after the game and the media scrum outside is talking to Jerry outside of the locker room, mm. and he's talking louder than you're talking inside the inside of the uh, uh, dressing room. Mm -hmm. mm. Is that all? That's all. Thank you. <laughs> I want to make it clear. I still love my football team the way I've loved it since I was 10 years old and went to my first game in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. Okay. But I'm right where I was 24 hours ago when we got hit out of the blue with the Jay Glazer report that Mike McCarthy had been hired as the next head coach of my Dallas Cowboys. And what was my first reaction to you? It's not bad. That is classic damning with faint <laughs> praise. That's what you call that. It's not bad. And then a little later yesterday, I heard that predictably... Mike McCarthy had hired his old friend and longtime defensive coordinator, Mike Nolan, to be the next Cowboy defensive coordinator. Well, Mike Nolan was the head coach when Mike McCarthy was offensive coordinator at 49ers. Well, he, when he, he, owed him, he owed him a favor, okay. and he just returned the favor. Yeah. And what was my reaction in the afternoon to that? Not bad. Yeah. Damning with faint praise. So, I told you yesterday... This football team <laughs> needed a shake-it-up move. It needed a splash. It needed a wow. It needed somebody who could come in and light a fire under a soft, underachieving 8-8 eight eight football team. It needed your, your idea of Sean Payton. <laughs> I said, why not bring Bill Cower out of retirement? How about who knows? What, who knows what's going to happen in New England? How about Bill Belichick? How about the guy who still works here named Urban Meyer, 
who could be Jerry Jones's, could have been Jerry Jones's next Jimmy Johnson. Mm -hmm. It's high risk, but it could be the highest reward. Right. I love Urban Meyer. He, he did nothing but, but incredible things at Utah and at Florida and at Ohio State. And who knows what he might do if you handed him over a talented pro football team. He would light a fire. It would be a new sense of urgency. He would go in there and change the culture. Mm -hmm. Instead, here I go with a Mike McCarthy who, frankly, makes Jason Garrett look like a dynamic motivator. <laughs> His personality is far less than Jason Garrett's was. Am I right? Yeah. He's kind of a zero as a personality, right? <laughs> and the harder I look at what he did in Green Bay... When Aaron Rodgers was as great as you said that Aaron Rodgers <laughs> used to be, when he was great, Mike McCarthy was pretty good. So he went along for a great ride with him. He did. And when Aaron Rodgers began to clearly decline over the last four years, Mike McCarthy looked more and more ordinary to me. Mm. He looked like some guy who played tight end at something called Baker College <laughs> in rural Kansas. Oh, yeah. And came out of nowhere to this. And now I look at, wait a second, over the last four years that he was the head coach in Green Bay, his team was 17th in the NFL in yards gained and 14th in points scored. Is, is that great? Is that going to change life in Dallas? We didn't need to fix the offense. <laughs> we needed to fix the culture and the defense. Right. So now I'm looking at, I look back today at the Bleacher Report story. Remember the expose of last April about why did Aaron Rodgers and Mike McCarthy fall apart and Mike McCarthy got fired? Reason number one was, and I'm going to quote the, the article, his scheme went stale and he did not adapt. Yikes, really, okay? And one personnel man said that Mike McCarthy got, quote, unquote, full of his own juice. Like he st started to real to really feel himself, and that he checked out and that he lost his enthusiasm to the point that during Saturday walkthroughs in his last season, <laughs> he was getting a massage. Yeah. He sneaked upstairs to his office and sneaked the masseuse up the back yeah, stairs yeah, to his office, oh, and he got himself a massage. And the article says, Aaron Rodgers not pleased with that. No. I don't blame him for that <laughs> no. one, right? I mean, I like a good massage, too, but not okay. at work. Not, yeah. not at work. Well, thank you. Not on Saturday before no, one of no. 16 no. Right. games, right? <laughs> okay, and this is the worst of all. The article says that when McCarthy was first hired by Ted Thompson, the former GM mm -hmm. of the Packers, that he was called Pittsburgh Macho. Mike McCarthy grew up in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. But there's another counter quote from a personnel director who says, the truth is that Mike McCarthy is a fake tough guy. Oh! Fake tough guy. And there's quote after quote in the Bleacher Report article from players inside, from coaches inside, who say that Mike, McCarthy created a soft culture in Green Bay. It was all offense with no emphasis on defense. And by the way, over the, last, over the last four years, nobody threw the football more than Green Bay did. They were number one in passes attempted. Mm -hmm. So it was all throwing with no emphasis on the defensive mindset. Mm -hmm. And there's quotes from defensive players who said, he just ignored the defense and had no use for us, and we had to sort of do it ourselves. But the emphasis was all on Aaron Rodgers throwing the football. Meet the new coach, same as the old coach. This, this is Jason Garrett all over again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's who you just hired. You hired a more successful Jason Garrett. He did get to and win one Super Bowl right. 10 years ago. Correct. 10 years ago on the coattails of Aaron Rodgers, who at that point was at his peak to me. Mm -hmm. They went on a, a very improbable wild card run on the road all the way to the Super Bowl, right. and they won it. But I'm, I'm saying, wait a second. Soft culture? Got full of himself? Checked out? And, and now what? Well, now we're, we're told that he spent this offseason – going second, third level analytics that he created what he calls the McCarthy file up in his place up in Green Bay as he took the season off. 
and that he's bringing. He might want to change that. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The McCarthy file from the (laughs) 1950s, there'd be a lot of movie stars in Hollywood who would not want to be in the McCarthy (laughs) file, right? (laughs) But he should change that name. I agree with that. I I was surprised you knew that. But that's very good. Very good on your part. (laughs) I didn't think you were old enough to know that. Yeah, I was a history major. Okay, but remember this. Under Favre and Rogers, or with those two guys, as he took off, they took off, then Mike McCarthy is very good at befriending the the key people in the national media. So some of the biggest national reporters are close with Mike McCarthy. Some of the biggest national broadcast commentators on on network commentators, Mm -hmm. they love what Mike McCarthy did early on in Green Bay. So now this story is being written all over the place. Oh, he went and he got unstale sort of in the offseason. He figured out how to assemble a new analytics team. And it was even reported at one point that he said he wanted to talk to that, do you know, Jeopardy James. I'm, I'm a big yeah. Jeopardy yeah. fan. So James he's, Howes, uh, Holds, 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 yes. He's coming back this yeah. week and they're having a... Ken the Jennings dude, and the other guy. The the other guy clash of the Titans. Mm-hmm. And it's this week it. in primetime yeah. on Jeopardy. Way to go. Dean, I think Dean is the other yep, guy. Yep, I'll be watching that for sure. But he was even saying, I want to talk to him about maybe helping us or joining us huh. yes. on the analytics side in yes. Dallas. Okay, so... I'm sure this sold well to Jerry Jones. Yes. He's like, aha. Yeah. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.